Thank God the PlayStation 5 will be bringing a feature back that for some reason was taken away for a little bit. The wishlist feature is reportedly returning to the PlayStation Store on the PlayStation 5. Also, PlayStation 5 system software update allows you to easily access PS4 games saved on external storage, and PlayStation 5 games will continue to be cross-gen compatible with PS4 for at least three years. Now, that is coming directly from Sony, and it doesn't mean every game is going to be cross-gen, but it seems like Sony is going to keep it in their mind that they want to continue supporting the PlayStation 4 for those of you that want to stick to that console. I imagine within three years time the majority of you guys will make the leap but whatever the case may be we'll talk that at the end of this video. First of all a wishlist feature is reportedly returning to the PlayStation Store on the PlayStation 5. Wishlist is something that I really like. It allows me to you know, keep a list of all the games that I want to buy because nowadays PlayStation is becoming much like PC where there's just like a ton of games coming out every week. It's not quite at the level of PC, but there's a lot of indie games, a lot of lower key titles that come out and you guys know how gaming is. It's very much a recency thing where the games in the news cycle are going to get the attention but then there's going to be that game from three months ago that you wanted to play but you didn't want to buy it right away you had a bunch of other games that you were playing at the time well now without a wish list it's just gone in the ether you're never going to remember it but with a wish list you can always add those games to your library and whenever a big sale comes running around you can look at your wish list see all the games that are discounted and it just makes it very easy to follow everything but in overhauling the playstation store on desktop and mobile sony removed the wish list features so that was a very questionable decision however push square reported on the features swift return noting that the new embargo lift makes it possible to speak more candidly about the upcoming system as noted on playstation lifestyle since the storefront is built into the ps5 so too is the wish list and apparently the feature is more functional than ever before the publication shared a screenshot of being able to add games to your wishlist, specifically showcasing Watch Dogs Legion being added to the wishlist. Similar to how the wishlist used to work, Push Square notes that adding games or adding a game or DLC to your wishlist will guarantee you getting updates about the item as long as it's marked. So that's really nice. Wishlist is something that maybe that's very much a first world issue that, you know, people without a wishlist are not gonna be bothered too much, but I always like having a wishlist feature. I mean, it's a very simple feature. I don't know why you would remove it, and it just lets people keep an eye on the games that they ultimately do want to buy at some point. AKA, that means that Sony is ultimately going to be making more money at the end of the day. So removing that feature was a very, very questionable decision. Maybe it was something regarding Under the Hood. And some of the implementations that they were creating, Wishlist wasn't going to be effective in the online store. I don't know what the case is, but seeing it's back on the PlayStation 5 is going to be really nice. So let's hope for that feature to be coming back, and as reported by Push Square, it looks to be back, and hopefully more effective than ever before. Alright, moving on from that, PlayStation 5 system software update allows you to easily access PS4 games saved on an external drive. So this is going to be important. Twitter user Robert Serrano noted that the update is 0.87 gigabytes in size, so not too hefty, and it will update the PlayStation 5's firmware, and it will allow you to access your PlayStation 4 games from an external drive. Unfortunately, you can't access PlayStation 5 games on an external storage device because PlayStation 5 games are designed with that uh, SSD that's in the PlayStation 5 in mind. And even if you have an external SSD with a bay, that's not going to work because the SSD is a specialized SSD. So you have to factor that in. However, I've been recommending to you guys have an external drive because you only got 660 gigabytes to work with. I imagine the majority of you guys are not going to keep your PlayStation 4 around, you know, your room and, you know, changing between the consoles. That's a little bit of a nuisance. So I would imagine all of you guys want to play your PS4 games on your PS five hey uh, and a lot of those games are going to look better on your playstation 5 they're going to run better and even if you don't get the effective loading times that the ssd is going to offer uh it's just best to have all your games on and playable on the playstation 5 and using your external hard drive to store all of your PlayStation 4 games, that's going to leave that 660 gigabytes for you to be optimized and used on the PlayStation 5 games themselves because it is going to get picked up and filled up very, very quickly. Spider-Man Miles Morales Ultimate Edition being north of 100 gigabytes should give you an idea that this SSD is going to be something that is going to be relatively limited in space if you are the kind of person that's buying quite a lot of games. And if you're storing both PS4 and PS5 games on that SSD, I mean, yeah, you can always delete and reinstall games but even for people like that i mean that ssd is going to get filled up really quickly especially considering the gravitas of the download size of some of these games like the call of duty games are huge do you really want to use up that 660 gigabytes on games like that when a lot of those games can be kept on your external drive as far as the ps4 games are concerned 
And hopefully at some point we can at least store the PlayStation 5 games on our external device. We can't play them from the external device, but it'll allow us to move games in and out rather quickly, and that'll ease the time of actually having to delete, re-download games, because the download process for a lot of people is going to be quite a while, especially when you're talking about games that are 60, 80, 100 gigabytes, north of 100 gigabytes. Yeah, it's easy to preload games, but then off a whim, if you just want to re-download a game and it's like 3 o'clock and, you know, you're going to be spending all of your evening downloading that game. Nobody really wants to be put into that position. Lastly, I do want to know PlayStation 5 games will continue to be cross-gen compatible with PlayStation 4 for at least three years, and that is coming directly from Sony. Japanese website AV Watch recently interviewed Sony Interactive Entertainment Vice President Hideaki Noshino, and according to him, we can expect PS4, PS5 cross-gen titles to still be a thing into 2020. A uh, translation of this interview was provided by uh, Google Translate as courtesy by WCCF Tech. It may not be easy to develop PlayStation 5 specific development from day one. For the time being, development for PlayStation 4 is also necessary. It's not a PlayStation unless you prepare a system that developers can use over several years. So I think there is great potential in the future. In terms of compatibility, it is important to get PlayStation 4 titles on PS5, but I have insisted that forward compatibility supplying the same titles to PS5 as PS4 is important. The current assumption is that the transition from PS4 to PS5 will take about three years. In the meantime, how can I keep buying games on PS4? Can the purchase games be played on PS5, that is important. We ask developers to develop on the premise of cross-generation of PS4 and PS5. Now, I highly doubt it's going to be an instance of for you know, in 2023, are there still going to be big budget, like, AAA titles being released on PS4 and PS5? I'm a press X to doubt on that one. I mean, Horizon Forbidden West being a, a cross-gen title was a little bit of a shocker to me, but come 2023, I don't think that's going to be a regularity. Are we going to see sports games and some other fringe titles on the PlayStation 4 still? Sure. I imagine that's going to be a thing, but come 2023, I really do expect the PlayStation 4 at that stage of the game to be phased out. PlayStation 5 prices at that point possibly coming lower. We get read designs, we get the console readily available. A lot of people should have access to the PS5 at that point, so I don't think it's going to be a big deal. We're developing for the PlayStation 4 is completely necessary. If you still want to do that 2022, 2023, sure, but at some point in the next few years, you do have to ultimately phase out, out PS4 because while you can make improvements for a game that's on the PS4 and PS5 for that PS5 version, ultimately, you are going to get the best visual upgrades and performance upgrades when a game is developed ground up for the next generation consoles and PC in mind while not having it in the back of the developer's head. Hey, we ultimately have to get this game on the PS4 as well. PS4 at the end of the day is a last generation platform we need to keep that in last generation i understand next year next two years we need to support the ps4 there's a lot of people that are going to stick around with the ps4 but at some point we do have to make that transition where we do go okay the big budget games are going to be ps5 exclusives we need to utilize everything that the ps5 can do and even in year one you're seeing that demon souls is not going to be on the ps4 ratchet and clank uh i don't imagine god of war ragnarok is going to be on the ps4 there's going to be a couple titles that are going to be ps5 exclusives but hey more titles on the PS4 as well for the short term. I do think it's good for everyone involved. So that's going to conclude this video. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Wishlist feature coming back is a huge thumbs up to me and a lot of good stuff all around. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching. And goodbye. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.